Doom Eternal kind of feels like a modern day version of Zelda 2, or other similar games which come out only to have a sequel be radically different in a lot of ways. It's a nice change of pace, not only from every other major company iterating on their major money makers, but also the growing saturation of old school shooters. Doom 2016 was still fairly distinct from them all as it had moved on and changed quite a bit from the original Doom. But now that so many more shooters in that style have been released by a ton of indie devs since then, it's really nice that they made a sequel something very different and insanely unique. What they did with Doom Eternal is shifted away from the classic shooter gameplay of, yeah, just strafe around like a madman, corner peek, and shoot it until it dies, that we're familiar with, and included a lot more micromanagement and specialized tactics. In most other shooters, generally the biggest factor in using a weapon versus an enemy is about efficiency. You're limited to what you can pick up, and some ammo types are less plentiful than others. Would it be great and effective if you could use the rocket launcher and chain gun the entire game? Absolutely! But in reality, those tend to have less use time because the ammo is less common, so you have to save it for the big guys that it can take out very fast. As fun as it would be, you probably don't need to use the rocket launcher against a single zombie. Doom Eternal takes this in a completely different direction. Could you use the rocket launcher for pretty much the entire game? Yeah, you actually could. There's very little really stopping you from making that possible. However, you really shouldn't, because Doom Eternal doesn't really use ammo scarcity as a driving force for diversifying your tactics. Instead, it focuses on making enemies far more deadly than a single gun can handle. You can generate ammo infinitely in almost every encounter, but you aren't able to hold much ammo at any given time. And the rate that you can generate ammo is too slow if you aren't using your entire arsenal. For example, a shotgun can kill a pinky in about 7 shots. That doesn't sound too bad, especially when the shotgun gets a full auto upgrade for rapid fire. Except the shotgun when you start out the game holds about 16 shells. No, not in its magazine. We don't do that here. 16 shells, period. As a result, if you were to try and use a specific weapon or ammo type too much, you're going to be waiting on your ammo generation a lot. It's possible, but this different approach pretty much forces you to use most of your arsenal if you want to not get reamed. It doesn't stop at just changing how ammo works. The entire game was finely tuned to make you think about so much more than just your weapon's crosshair in relation to the enemy's body. Of course, that is an oversimplification, but regardless, it is a pretty stark difference. Before I go any further, I will say most of what I'm saying is pretty general for Doom Eternal, but some things might not apply as much for others, since this is all from the perspective of someone who played the entire game on Nightmare, which for reference is the highest difficulty before you get into the hardcore options which wipe your saves. Going back to what changed between 2016 and Eternal, on top of the changes to your maximum ammo being much lower, they also made changes to glory kills in the chainsaw. Previously, the glory kills would cause an enemy to drop health and some ammo. Now this has been changed to only grant health. However, health isn't exclusive to glory kills anymore either, as enemies almost always drop health when they die. Instead, they give significantly more health than if they were killed normally. They also added a new mechanic to encourage regular glory kills even further. After two glory kills, you charge up a move called the Blood Punch. With this ability ready, the next punch will cause huge damage to the enemy you hit and enemies around you. For lack of a better phrase, this thing packs some serious punch. You're essentially hitting someone with more damage than a double barrel can pump out. Plus, you can upgrade it to make enemies drop even more HP when they die to the Blood Punch. It's a really good way to get out of being cornered or just burst something down. The Chainsaw remains identical to 2016. Kill enemies to make ammo happen, small enemies need one unit of fuel, and anything else needs three. Except they retrofitted it into the new system really smoothly by making it regenerate the first unit instead of working off pickups exclusively. So as I mentioned before, as long as there's a constant stream of fodder demons, which is almost always guaranteed, you never really have to worry about running dry. Instead, you're focusing on not running out of something you need when you need it either by going too long without a restock, or just using the same combo too much. The chainsaw isn't the only recharging gadget you have. This time around, the Doom guy has a whole suite of abilities at his disposal which play into how you handle each situation, and they all recharge on their own. The first one you're introduced to, other than the chainsaw, is the frag grenade. 
This one is very straightforward. You press the keybind and it shoots a grenade. Unlike other explosives, this one does no self damage. It's a good bit of burst damage and can be upgraded to cause pretty much any enemy to stagger when caught in the huge blast radius. Best of all, it's absolutely free. You eventually get an upgrade to start two at once, turning this thing into a really potent weapon. The next one is the Flame Belch. This one is less of a combat tool and more of a recovery mechanic, similar to Glory Kills. It shoots out a very brief burst of flame that sets enemies on fire, doing almost no damage. But it makes enemies drop armor slowly. If you can kill them, you'll get a massive burst of armor. The goal is to press this button, flick your mouse across the screen as quick as possible to cover as many enemies as you can, and then kill them all. You get so much armor back when you hit multiple enemies, it's not even funny. One of my favorite things to do is flame belch the enemy the frame before I go for a glory kill, so that I can get both health and armor back from this enemy. Since armor is just a secondary health bar in Doom Eternal, it gives you so much more sustain in a tight situation. And the last gadget is the Ice Bomb. This thing is a wide AoE crowd control tool where you just freeze anything in place instantly. With upgrades that can boost your damage against frozen enemies, make them drop more HP, and even freeze the massive demons who just get a brief stagger from it at first. This game very much encourages you to combo them together. The Flame Belch surprisingly doesn't unfreeze enemies, so it's a really nice way to generate armor if you're worried about missing or you want to group a bunch of fast moving targets. Just freeze a whole pack, flame them all, and chuck a frag grenade to kill them. There's even a rune you get, which as far as I'm concerned is essential because it's just way too good, that recharges your equipment if you kill enemies who are affected by them. This even applies to the chainsaw as well. At first, the cooldowns might feel a bit sluggish, but once you get this rune and the game starts to pick up, you'll be freezing multiple demons regularly, setting others on fire, and blowing them up with your frag grenade, so you'll be getting your equipment back very fast. And the best part about the equipment? Other than the chainsaw, none of them interrupt your attacks. They all happen from your shoulder-mounted guns, so you can pretty much be firing your chain gun to your heart's content while sending out blasts of fire, ice, and explosives at will. There is one last move you get in this game. You now have the ability to dash. This runs off a recharging meter, and you can dash at the two times at once. But if you use both dashes, you do have to wait for the whole bar to fill back up before you could dash even once. It's generally faster for you to pace your dashes one at a time, but if you really need to get out of there ASAP, you can use both. You can also dash while you're in the air, which gives you some really good air mobility when paired with a double jump. But the dashes also will only reset while you're on the ground, with the exception for an upgrade that refills dashes on a glory kill, which can be pretty helpful when there's a lot of cacodemons and pain elementals. Mix this all together and you have a cocktail of absolute chaos where you're endlessly sustaining yourself. In the case of playing on Nightmare, you are constantly bringing yourself back from the brink of death by just murdering demons endlessly. It feels way more in line with how the Doom Slayer is portrayed in the writings to my understanding. The demons are no joke with the fact that they can kill you pretty quickly and attack so hard your body just instantly shatters when you die. But on the other hand, you are an unstoppable ball of rage so long as you have more demon guts to rip out. Like, Doom Guy is cool for sure, but considering he's just using normal guns 90% of the time, it makes you wonder how humanity lost so badly in 2016, when they have the same guns but in larger numbers. But Doom Eternal really sells the fact that he's a specialized demon killing machine. But now is also the start of my quote unquote issues with this game. I say that because they are kinda nitpicks but also stuff I do think that could be handled differently to make the game more engaging than it currently is. I can be pretty particular about my FPS mechanics, so you've been warned. When I said you can really recover your health and armor, I mean it. A flame belched fodder demon you kill with a glory kill can give you 75 total health and armor. By the time I beat the game, I had 170 health and 150 armor. So this one enemy gave me back a quarter of my total health. Of course, you won't always be glory killing flame belch enemies, but you'll likely be glory killing a lot of enemies in general, can flame belch crowds, or just end up scoring a lot of multi kills since every last thing you do gives you health. But to top it all off, I swear there's something funky with the damage in this game. So many times I'll get burst down from high health and armor, but I'll always cling on with low life values. I don't know if it's some hidden damage reduction as your health gets low, or if it's some form of damage gate where you can't get one tapped or burst down. This clip is one of the things that tipped me off to it. Look at my health. 
I go from 72 to 5, then to 1. I'm on Nightmare. Nothing deals that little damage. I'll easily take more than 5 damage just from farting too hard. The final boss also makes this pretty blatant. He can take out over 120 HP in a single hit, but then the same attack took me from 51 to exactly 5, which seems to be a pretty common number I'll jump down to no matter what. I'll just constantly keep going down to 5 HP. So when I found this out, it got me thinking. Am I doing well because I'm efficiently using combos and being able to avoid enemy fire enough to keep myself alive? Or am I just accidentally brute forcing it by constantly regenerating? Now I'm not saying by any means that this game suddenly became easy with this realization, but it felt like the balance in this game was a lot more sloppy than I thought, because the only thing stopping you from going full CBT is this game purposely saving you from instantly dying. But let's get back to the good stuff, which is the weapons. These were handled pretty well in Doom Eternal. They took nearly the exact same arsenal from Doom 2016 and gave them all more personality with further defined roles due to the ammo changes and how enemies feel a bit more distinct overall. In general, each weapon has its own situation that it excels in and stands out more than it previously did. This is further enhanced by a mechanic where all reloads and cooldowns are bypassed by switching weapons. This gives weapons a huge amount of combo potential by allowing you to swap between two weapons to do the damage that five weapons would be doing. This can lead to some absolutely disgusting but hella gratifying strategies where you end up taking out five heavy demons in four seconds by switching between three weapons, all specializing in the enemies you're fighting. Here is the general rundown for how I tend to use these weapons. For the shotgun, I'll more often than not only use this to force a glory kill on a small demon. It'll only one-shot them if you're practically shoving it up your ass, so it's easy to force them into a stagger with one or two shots. But I do use the mods a lot more regularly, primarily the grenade launcher because it consumes one shell for a pretty good AoE attack. That's just disgustingly efficient. It's also really handy because it can instantly stagger a Kakademon if you shoot it almost anywhere on their face. This is still good even if you have most of your arsenal because you can immediately take them out of the fight instead of waiting for a charge time or using one of your frag grenades for it. I really don't use the full auto honestly. Once your arsenal gets fleshed out, you really don't need to use it the truth of the lighter demons and you have much better options for DPS. And for the heavy cannon, really I only use it for the sniper. Despite the name, the primary fire does too little damage and the micro missiles aren't that great. But dear god that sniper mod is amazing on its own, and even more so because of the weapon swapping trick. It becomes essential for mid-range DPS combos and great for shooting weak spots since it can one-shot nearly any enemy weak spot in the game. The plasma rifle is a really nice all-around weapon. Unlike the heavy cannon, it actually does good damage with the primary fire and even has some specific interactions where energy shields take more damage and barriers explode, allowing some enemies to basically be free explosions for you. The heat blast alt fire remains extremely satisfying and still a great damage dealer with the ability to stagger pretty much anything in front of you. I usually save the primary for layer targets as well as shields and if I have a blast ready, I'll definitely use it to stagger some heavy demons. I can't say I ever felt the need to use the beam off fire simply because very few dedicated DPS mods can hold a candle to just comboing with two weapons. Especially mods that require you to dedicate time to charging them or ones that slow you down. Then you have the rocket launcher which is a monster. It's great for anything so long as it's not too far away due to the speed of the rockets, but at close range you can hit some of the more rambunctious enemies pretty easily. The lock-on mod is also absurd for it. Being able to quickly put out four rockets at range, they'll pretty much always hit their mark unless the target is behind a wall is insane, even at the cost of almost no blast radius. You can just delete Hell Knights and Cacodemons immediately with this, but if something doesn't die in a single burst, you can always go back to your trusty DPS combos. I often love using this thing alongside the flame belts to quickly deal with multiple inflamed demons. I never even touch the other mod because it just doesn't seem worth it to lose the massive rocket barrage you get. After that we get the Ballista. This will be your staple weapon for nearly every combo. It's hit scan and one of the highest damage per shot weapons. It does have a really long recovery, but that kinda doesn't matter. By swapping back and forth between the Sniper and the Ballista, pretty much nothing survives after a few seconds. And with the Arbalist mod, you also have extremely strong burst damage if you ever need to corner peek. 
It also does bonus damage to flying enemies, so you can one-shot Cacodemons and almost one-shot Pain Elementals if you hit them in the eye. You could try using the other mod, but honestly with the Grenade Launcher and Rocket Launcher, you have so much good AoE, you really don't need to worry about this at all. Of course, we can't possibly forget about the iconic Double Barrel Boomstick. This thing is without a doubt a powerhouse of Point Blank. When paired with the Ballista, you have some of the highest single target damage in this game. You really don't have to worry about enemies being a threat when you get close enough to use it, because trust me, they will not last long enough to do anything meaningful. It's also highly forgiving because the spread is extremely wide. Even if it didn't do massive damage, I'd probably still use it for the Marauder and the Whiplash since they can be really slippery. That and the fucking dog the Marauder summons is kind of a giant pain in the ass sometimes. Also the fact it comes with a grappling hook is just icing on the cake. And with the way they teased you with it in this game, they really wanted to make this shotgun special. And I can understand why. Which is unfortunate to say that, honestly, I don't really care for it that much. Now, is it a great DPS tool? Bar none. But honestly, it just doesn't feel as satisfying as other double barrels I've used. To me, the sound effect has gone so far into base territory that it kind of loops back around, feeling like it doesn't have that much impact. And lastly, for our main weapons, is the chain gun. This is one I often question its usefulness. It can definitely shred with the mobile turret, but a lot of the times, a combo with the shotgun or auto rifle alongside the ballista will outpace it. It's definitely good for the light mobs, but also, the plasma rifle is kind of the same thing. As far as mods go, the shield is too much of a commitment for something I don't think is all that helpful considering how aggressive this game can get and how the biggest asset you have isn't being defensive, but going on the offensive instead. I did end up using this a decent amount simply because it is easy damage, but this is one weapon I feel wouldn't really change the game if it simply didn't get carried over. On top of that, it's also kind of the least satisfying chain gun I've ever used. I was heartbroken when I saw this chain gun being teased at me for a bit, and then I got to fire it and it was just... okay. It's only redeemed a little by the mobile sentry mod shredding my speakers and almost sounding like an A-10 warthog on helium. Like every other weapon feels great, but those last two specifically kind of felt a bit flaccid to me. Which really sucks because in my eyes, a double barrel and the minigun analog are the two most important weapons to get right. But overall, this is a nice set of weapons. Unfortunately, the almost direct ports of many of the weapons and mods just fall a bit flat in this game, when previously some of these could at least get some use, but at the same time, the main mods you will end up be using do give the gun a stronger identity, so I'm kind of fine with that overall. I'd rather have a strong baseline you can build around over a ton of choices back and forth and having to work with all the variations at play. Now that you're starting to see how much ammo all these guns use up and how much damage they do on their own alongside the weapon swap mechanic, you can start to see how much you're encouraged to use most of your arsenal constantly. But there is one issue that came up as a result of all this. It felt like they beefed up some of the enemies to further push you to try out these combos, it also feels like they didn't commit hard enough in case some people couldn't get a grip on that playstyle. As a result, enemies are pretty tanky if you use your weapons normally, but once you get deep into combos, every single enemy just lasts seconds, with the exception of the super heavy demons. And even then, there's an exception to that. They just die too fast. It's like our weapons were given such strong identities and uses that it completely negated the improvements made to the enemies themselves. I genuinely have almost never looked at a situation and thought, oh yeah, I need to take that guy out first. Because I can pretty much delete any Pain Elemental, Hell Knight, or Mancubus in seconds with combos and equipment that it just doesn't matter who I go for first. Plus, every enemy does so much damage that nothing stands out in that way either. I find myself focused more on keeping track of the fodder than I do the guys actually shooting at me. I remember when they introduced the Cyber Mancubus, they kind of made it sound like he was a big deal with him being heavily armored and an area denier. So here's me removing him from existence in 0.7 seconds. This isn't really helped by the fact that you're also so much faster that you kind of just outpace everything. Even the enemies that were spin up a lot can still barely keep up with you when you go into pure evasion mode. So in the end, nothing really stands out from one another apart from their time to kill, with the exception of the Marauder. But that's primarily because he's designed to require focus or else you just can't hit him period. Fighting a Marauder is pretty much the only time my atrophied target priority instincts kick in because fighting a Marauder with any medium or heavy demon in the area can be an absolute pain. 
But in a way, I'm kind of glad this is the case, because of another issue that would personally drive me up the wall if target prioritization mattered way more in Doom Eternal. Spawns are straight up inconsistent sometimes. Every time you die, the position and timing of the enemy spawns has a chance of just changing. Here's an example that still drives me mad. This is where they introduce the Arch Vial who spawns on this ledge in the top left. First thing I do is snipe the Hell Knight and then go to see the Arch Vial. I do this route a few times after failing and suddenly the Hell Knight just doesn't spawn here anymore. And also suddenly the Arch Vial is now behind me? This is definitely more or less a nitpick since this really only matters on high difficulties because dying and working out a strategy is kind of what you do for the most part. Oh yeah, and speaking of those heavy demons that I mentioned, those guys are also kind of invalidated as well near the end of the game. The moment you get the Crucible, which is a charge-based weapon that one-shots every enemy in the game except two, these guys stop existing because really there's no other target to save it for other than these guys. Outside of one on the last level, I never fought a single tyrant since I got the Crucible, just because there's enough charges for you to use it on every tyrant you see. Of course, you could just not use it, but I feel like the Crucible was kind of an afterthought, especially with how clunky it is. Sometimes it'll come out immediately, and other times it takes a second after getting pulled out. It makes me wonder what plans they had for it, since there's really no reason for it to be a dedicated weapon, rather than just working like the chainsaw. I feel like I should reiterate this. This isn't a problem with poor enemy design. The enemies in this game are actually excellent with a lot of interactivity, unique fighting styles, and all sorts of attacks. Even if I feels like some of the interactions are a bit forced. The Whiplash is a different kind of asshole from the Cyber Mancubus, who's a different kind of asshole from the Carcass, who's constantly cock-blocking your shots just at the right time. Anyways, this is all a problem with how much the Doom Slayer has changed, really. Why should I worry about removing the Mancubus' flamethrower when I could just remove him instead? And doing it while avoiding the other six enemies in the arena with sheer speed. I know I spent a lot of time saying negative things about this game, but that's mostly because the core is really that strong that there's not as much to talk about when compared to a lot of the specific issues I got. And even then, a lot of the issues I have aren't really that bad. It's just stuff that's kinda jank and I'd like to see it get improved. Like, I really do love this game. It's pretty well thought out, even if it's a bit janky in places. Although I'm not really sure if I really want more of this, though. And that's primarily for one reason, and it's just this game is really taxing. I like to play these games on the highest difficulties because FPS games like this are kind of like puzzles to me. You see an encounter, see a challenge, and work on the strategy to overcoming that. But this game is so intense and has so much going on that I could only really play it for about 30 to 60 minutes at a time over the course of a month. Since over the course of a playthrough, I just start to slow down and forget my inputs and all that. Like, here's an example of me trying to play while I was just, just a little tired that day. Ignoring the absolutely trash aim, I'm just not processing my actions correctly. And now here I am a few hours later, once I started to wake up a bit and had the energy to keep going since I realized I was towards the end of the game. This game really destroyed me mentally, and it's part of the reason why I'm not really interested in trying the DLC at the moment. Maybe at some point, but for now I am done with Doom Eternal. But regardless of all that, I'm just glad this weird little experiment exists because it really expands the idea of what a shooter can be in such a unique way.